MJF is pouting. Has no friends. When the acclaimed walk up and they've been saying, damn it, Max, all night. And this time they're trying to look at MJF. Damn it, Max, they say. Max Caster's the only guy who likes you. I laughed at that. That was a great payoff to that joke. We will team with you, but there are two conditions. You have to scissor, scissor us, and you must wear what's in this bag. And they had him a big, hefty trash bag, also endorsed by John Cena. And Jeff takes the bag. In fact, he even takes the bag. He's obviously considering this. But he takes a peek inside. No, he says, absolutely not. We'll never do this. We'll never, ever, ever team with you. I got one more team on my checklist that might team with me. And he turns around. Oh, God, he says. And the camera pans over. And it's Jeff Jarrett and Sanjay Dutt and Jay Lethal and the Giants. How the fuck did this guy not choose those guys? <laughs> I took one look at them. They're all laughing. They're all excited. Dude, they were so happy to team with MJF. Yes. I was like, man, you seen these guys? They can roll. You got two former world champions there and a Giant. So to, uh, to wrap up this storyline, MJF was not on fire. No, no, no. And uh, and he just picked the acclaimed. That was a story. I thought, you know, they do a lot of long storylines, long, long builds and payoffs in AEW. This was uh, one week. No, and you know there were I, there were two things, there were two things they could have done that I thought they were going to do. One was that Jay White would actually throw a fireball at MJF, burn him. Mm. And uh, and having been on fire, he would realize, well, motherfucker, I guess I, I, I would rather team with the Acclaim than be on fire. Or, because w- what happened next was even more baffling. It's like, out comes Switchblade and his crew, and they get in the ring, and then they hit the Acclaim's music. And they just came out. Yeah. And they did their ramp, and they did the rap and everything, and then they hit MGF's music. And then he just came out, and and we had the match, and I was I was I was I was actually baffled. I was like, "That's the payoff here." I thought, "Okay, well, he goes out there, and he's all by himself. He don't want no teams. He doesn't want a teammate. He'll do this one on four, goddamn it." And uh, you know, the match they ring the bell, and then you know they they claims music. They come out. Max is a rap. Gets on the apron. MJF goes, "No, I don't want to team with you. No, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna tag you." And he does a match all by himself for a while. But you know, eventually, it is four on one. He gets in a real bad spot. Maybe they're threatening to do something real bad to him. And he finally does that dive and makes the tag, and and away you go. Something. But instead, it was just like, "I will never team with you, even if it's on fire." And then he just uh, just picked him. That was it. Turns out, MJF can't be trusted. Well, I guess that's true. Yeah. I guess he is a liar yeah. in character and storyline. And there was a bit in between here where uh, Roderick Strong interrupted Renee, was uh, trying to talk to uh, his buddy Adam Cole. Adam Cole's had enough. Roddy, he says, shut the hell up, man. So there you go. The tension is building between these two injured people who can't wrestle. So, yes, as you noted, Bullet Club, and, uh, Bullet Club Gold versus MJF and three mystery partners. And the acclaimed immediately come out, do their rap, dub these guys a pair of New Japan rejects and the Ass Boys. Max then comes, the, the, the big reveal, rather than who's going to be the partner, is MJF wearing pink gear, including a very, very cheap pink scarf. So, do this match. MJF's on the apron the entire time. Uh, have I mentioned lately how awesome Austin Gunn is? That guy's quite great. I got to see you, Jay White versus Billy Gunn. I could not believe that we got Switchblade versus Daddy Ass. Yeah. Yes, we did. It happened. Yeah, it was great. And It was uh, ridiculous. Of course it was ridiculous. Yes. <laughs> Everything Billy Gunn does is ridiculous, especially when they whipped him into the barricade. And they whipped him into the barricade, and he stops running. He gets down on all fours and kind of leans into it. <laughs> it did not look very good. But uh, MGF does very, very little in this match. There's one point right before commercial. They clean house. They want him to scissor. He refuses. Uh, Eventually, there's a whole melee going on. And the acclaimed are getting beat up four on three. MJF is just standing on the apron. Very upset about this, but not doing a single solitary thing to help. Just watching and being very upset. Eventually, Max makes the hot tag to Max. Jay White runs away. MJF runs wild. On all the other three goofs, he's 
destroying them. They try a 310 to Yuma. He turns into a DDT. Hits the kangaroo kick. Place is going crazy. And then he turns around. And Jay White grabs him. Hits the Blade Runner. And pins him clean. He sure did. He avoided him the entire match. Wouldn't go near him. And then finally saw his opportunity and hit his move and beat him. I thought the finish was great. Yeah. thought it was a great finish to set up the title match. And, uh, and then they had the thing afterwards where... Jay is going to waffle him with the belt, but uh, Caster jumps in to take the bullet. Yeah. And nearly killed himself on the bump, by the way. It was brutal. And then uh, the heels bail, and then all four guys do the big scissor party. And it's like, clearly there's more coming here with with MJF and and, uh, the acclaimed. (laughs) But like, bro, how many storylines does this guy have? You know what I'm saying? Um, MJF has got Jay White. Yes. Samoa Joe. Yes. Whatever's going on with Adam Cole and Roderick Strong. Yes. Um, Wardlow. Wardlow. Yes. Now he's got some deal going on with the acclaimed. That's true, yeah. Max Caster could end up being his partner if Sean's not available for the uh, pay-per-view. It's got a mystery partner there. It's like, he's in at least five storylines right now. Yeah, I was going to say at least they finished the Omega one, but uh, they just added the acclaimed. So the, the number of stories is still there. Yeah. So yes, uh, the, the, after the match, the, they're they're all checking on Caster. Even MJF is concerned that Caster may be seriously hurt. And Caster, from his back, throws up the scissors symbol. Everyone goes crazy. MJF still won't do it, and so Daddy Ass gave just chewed him out. How dare you! After all this man did for you, and MJF relented. They did the scissor party. Show ended. Everyone was happy. So it was a strange show. It was not the best show I ever saw, but it was done. I saw some fun wrestling. I saw, and, and, and the big full gear matches of MGF versus Jay White, Christian Cage versus Adam Copeland in the trios match, and Moxley versus Orange. That's three good matches that are all very, very clear, and I understand why they're happening. I'm looking forward to them, and that's a, that's a good show. It wasn't a bad show, but uh, this was not my favorite Dynamite. I, 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 there were, I had a lot of problems with this show, and uh, I guess I'll decide after we review NXT... But I certainly had the feeling going in that I enjoyed NXT a lot more than this show. Okay. And I mean, the main event, I mean, gee, many Christmas. We had Ilya Dragunov and wow, that's always... Carmelo Hayes, which yeah. I'm pretty sure was better than anything on this show, except maybe Claudio and Orange. But I'm pretty sure that Ilya and, and Carmelo was better. You know, one of the things someone here mentions that, uh, you know, maybe MJF will face multiple people. At the world's end paper. It does feel like they're building into like a, an elimination chamber match or something. Well, you know, when you think about it, we've been talking about this forever. Their MGF is still pushing this bidding war of 2024 thing. And so he he posted something on on his uh on Twitter. It was like eighty three days or something, and he deleted it. And it was basically the number of days until the world the world's end pay per view or whatever. So I think that the next storyline is going to be that his deal expires at the end of the year, which, of course, it does not. But that's the storyline. So then, you know, and I don't know, this this whole thing is like, when when MJF was a heel, okay, I get it. You want to be hated, so you're going to act like you want to go to the other company. That's easy heat, okay? Well, now he's a baby face. And so... A baby face wants to get the hell out of here and go to the other place? Or at least have a bidding war to go to the other place? That's already weird. Okay, so then let's say that the story is that, well, his deal is up and he's champion still. So, you know, Tony Khan is going to sign this giant match with five guys all in the ring. How could MJF possibly escape with the title? Because, of course, if he escapes with the title, he'll be a free agent going into 2024. And then, you know, but it's the same thing. It's like... So your top babyface is teasing that he wants out or that he might leave with the title? How is that a babyface thing? So I don't know where they're going. I don't know what's going on. But uh, I hope they got a really clever plan because on the surface, it seems just how could this possibly work? So we shall see. Well, I don't know. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.